We are joined by Andy Wiederhorn, President and Chief Executive Officer of Fat Brands, Inc. Great to have you on this morning. Oh, thanks for having me. How are you? So, Andy, can you tell us a bit about this deal and why these companies were important for you to acquire? Well, this fits well in our portfolio. We don't have a pizza brand. We don't have a, a cookies or dessert type brand. Uh, pretzels, um, the hot dog on a stick is something else that's complimentary. So right now we have three burger brands, two steakhouse brands, two chicken wings brands, and this just fits in really well to round out the portfolio. It's a transformative acquisition for us. So you're going to have more than 2,000 restaurants worldwide uh, with this acquisition. Given that really enormous footprint, uh, how do you operate as a parent company and just maintain high quality controls across the board? You bet. So we, we've made nine acquisitions before this one. And so we're used to this and, and merging the companies together. Um, we always keep the, the marketing people separate for each brand and the field operations people separate. And it's really sort of consolidating the back office and taking advantage of those synergies. But for us, you know, the, each brand operates independently with the, the power of fat brands. Our purchasing power, global purchasing power will, will now be more than $500 million a year in, in products that we purchase. So you're going to get better pricing for the franchisees, it makes them more money, things like that. Uh, we've had you on before, and I know you've said that you're always looking to acquire. Are there any other kind of restaurants uh, or, or food types that you're that you're looking to get involved with? Well, I think that you'll see us continue to do the bolt-on acquisitions. Like if we buy another chicken wing brand or or you know another burger brand that makes sense for us geographically or it's easy to manage in our portfolio. But strategically, we're not done. We're just getting started, and we have. You know, a few other tricks up our sleeves that we hope uh, we'll be able to share with you over the, the course of the rest of the year. We're, we're very acquisitive right now. Um, this transaction alone is going to triple our EBITDA going forward. It triples our unit count. And, uh, you know, there's more to come here. Uh, how are you dealing with the labor shortage? It's pretty much across the board, we're hearing restaurant chains dealing with this. Um, how are you dealing with it? What are you seeing on the ground? My favorite two words to describe it are total nightmare. It has been very <laughs> difficult for our franchisees um, to hire people. Um, that, where it really hurts the most are, are new restaurant openings. We'll open more than 50 new restaurants this year, and it's hard for those franchisees to find new managers to come on board. When, when they're opening their second or third restaurant, they can sort of borrow staff from one restaurant to get the other one open, but it's really hard for the first-time operators to get up and running when they can't find people in the marketplace. We all know this is driven by the stimulus. The stimulus will run out over the summer. Things should go back to normal in another couple months. So it's really just a waited out uh, game here, but it, it sure is annoying. So that's interesting. So you're attributing it primarily at this point to, to that extra stimulus money. Is there anything else at play? Because we are hearing anecdotally about maybe some people moving or in some cases, maybe people don't feel comfortable going back to work just because of the COVID situation. You think it really is about that extra stimulus money? It's been driven 100% by the stimulus. It really hasn't been by geography. I mean, some of the food price hikes that you're seeing and some of the food shortages that you hear about are, are the same problem, that they, they can't hire enough workers in the production facilities to generate the product fast enough and get the supply chain up and running. But it's not tied to geography. It's not tied to the vaccine anymore. This is all about the stimulus, and, it, and there's an end to it, and it's in sight, and it's going to be by the end of the summer. Are there any trends that, that emerged during the pandemic in terms of food, um, particularly fast food, that you think are here to stay? Well, you know what's interesting? We saw tremendous spikes in our casual dining brands. The, the obvious on the fast casual side with delivery and to go, the burger brands, the sales were off the charts. But on the casual dining side where people wanted to get out to outdoor dining, outdoor restaurants, indoor casual dining where, you know, separate dining room, separate bar, um, people being together again. We've seen huge spikes there. They're, they're up more than 20% over 2019 levels. And that's surprising to me to see that much. But that started during the pandemic when you had outdoor dining open up. We just had people flocking to the restaurants. Um, it, it is so fascinating. I also saw um, that one of your brands um, that, that you are acquiring, a hot dog on a stick, is that, um, is that food trucks? Is that, can you tell us a bit about that? And is that kind of part of, of where you think that, that fast food is going? Well, Hot Dog on a Stick does have a food truck. Uh, Fat Burger has a food truck also. Food trucks are great to get out and help the community. During the, the pandemic, we gave away 35,000 hamburgers at Fat Burger to the, all the uh, first responders and healthcare workers. Hot Dog on a Stick is really about the product. It's the lemonade and it's the hot dog. And we can brand those or co-brand those across all of our other brands. So you could 
eat a fat burger and get a hot dog on a stick if you feel like a hot dog and, and the lemonade or, or a Johnny Rockets and so on. So having another 700 restaurants to put those products into is very interesting uh, for us with Hot Dog on a Stick because it's such a well-recognized brand. Um, and Andy, last question. Have you, have you thought about um, raising wages given, uh, given this labor shortage that we're seeing or are you just, as you said, going to wait it out until September? Well, so all of the restaurants of our 2,000 restaurants are all owned by franchisees, and so it's up to the franchisee as to what they're going to pay. But certainly, um, wages go up, a minimum wage goes up, that drives up costs. So you know, there really is a spiral here if you let that get away from you, and so you have to kind of manage it as best you can. But it, the labor market hasn't been about throwing money at it; it's just trying to find bodies who are willing to work. So I don't think that that's an immediate solution, and that's kind of a good thing because that's not going to drive prices up as fast. All right. Uh, Andy Riederhorn, president and CEO of Fat Brown. So great to have you on. Really appreciate it.